Network connected devices are becoming more powerful and enabling emerging technologies such as 5G and also distributed applications, which in turn is leading to the development of edge computing. Beth, what's the status at the moment of edge computing, especially within the various open source communities we have? So I'd say edge computing is very definitely an emerging technology. People are finding their way around it and um, to the point where there's an exploding number of projects, uh, 24 as of last count. Uh, um, but that's obviously not going to remain. Uh, there's going to be some consolidation over the next year or so as, as people find their way and, and figure out what's missing and what, what needs to be done and, and, and how the use cases play out. I mean, coming from your background at, at Verizon, um, do you get involved in all those projects or are there certain key ones that, that they're, they're more focused on? No, absolutely not. I cannot possibly cover 24 open source projects. Uh, so I've been focusing on the um, OpenStack um, working group, uh, Edge working group, um, and that's primarily because of my background in OpenStack. I've been in the OpenStack community for uh, close to eight years now. Um, and then uh, also my uh, product, the Virtual Network Services product, does run in fact on OpenStack. So obviously I have a motivation to, to stay close to, to the development. If we look at um, application deployment and execution, um, we've got on the one hand virtual machines, and we've got containers as well. Is it an either or situation or, or is that too simplistic a, a view? That's uh, a very simplistic view. So, so really it's all of the above. Uh, you know, some, some applications will remain VMs, particularly security applications, um, you know, just because of the nature of the application, uh, that it really needs to be highly contained. Uh, and, but other applications uh, lend themselves to, um, to containers very easily, particularly homegrown applications where you have more control over them. Um, but I see the rise in microservices happening at the edge as well. That I have not seen yet, but that does not mean it won't be coming. <laughs> I mean, we are undergoing a, a rapid um, period of, of, of network evolution in the, in the technologies and approaches we develop. We're now looking at cloud native, um, and you know, on, only this week we're hearing about the move from VNFs to CNFs. This is, this is something new. Um, is this indicative of, of, as you said earlier, this kind of pioneering landscape? It's an early stage of, 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 of our community? Yes, absolutely. You know, CNFs, I only found out about them this week as well, and, and Multis, which is, which is a project uh, that allows Kubernetes uh, and, and containers to be multi-network multi home, which they haven't been, um, because containers really came out of the, the data center cloud model. So, you know, there's an understanding that as we move into the edge computing, we're learning more and more about the gaps that need to be filled, and so that's what we're working on. Uh, I know within the OpenStack community, uh, there's a number of projects specifically around uh, Keystone to, to, to create federated, um, a federated model that will allow the edge use cases, uh, Glance also. Um, and there will be others over time. So, and I expect that within the ONF and the Linux networking community as well. What are the, um, the market forces that are driving the development of, of edge computing? Oh, they are very diverse. I mean, the, the obvious one that, that you know, everybody is latching onto because it has an excellent business case, of course, is 5G. But that's just within the telecom. Uh, I'm seeing, uh, you know, once you lay down that, that telecom infrastructure that brings the network out to the edge where you have the, the low latency, all of a sudden there's IoT applications, there's um, infrastructure, um, manufacturing applications, uh, medical devices, all sorts of things can become a reality. Uh, and, you know, I know drones, you know, there's some sexy stuff, but there's also some real bread and butter stuff. Does the telco community maybe place too much emphasis on, on, on the edge? There seems to be a lot, of, lot at stake um, and benefiting from this central office realignment, if, if you like. Um, or might we see other players exploit or commercialize the edge 
faster and better than the telcos? That's an excellent question. Um, it's a little hard to say. I, I think the other communities aren't really quite up to understanding what the edge is. I, I'd say the one community that I'm seeing some work in is the IoT community. Uh, so there's the uh, Extreme Edge X Foundry uh, group that's um, working on IoT standards around IoT Edge um, because that's that's another obvious application, but it's definitely much more in its infancy. <laughs> a final question. Is, is there, we're talking all about the open source communities, but is, is there a role for the SDOs, the standard development organizations, um, to lead or harmonize architectures and development of Edge? Uh, absolutely, yes, yes. Um, so Edge is a complex of a lot of different things. In many ways, it's an integration project. Uh, which is very difficult for the open source community to embrace. Uh, you know, there are a number of integration projects that have been started, Acrano is, is one of them, um, but they're all in their infancy and, and herding cats uh, when you're doing integration is a lot harder than if you're within a single company and you can, you know, you can take all the components and kind of stick them together. <laughs> well, Beth, that's all we've got time for today, but as always, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. You're welcome, as always.